I'm, I'm awake enough. I'm awake enough to do a, a still in beta podcast. Oh. Oh. So so what you're saying is you don't even have to be fully awake to, to have a podcast worth of shit. That's what you're saying right now. <laughs> That's how good I am. Oh, okay. Well, we'll fucking see about that, jackass. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 88 for uh, some the 29th of July, 2016. <laughs> this is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos and that guy right there, that's Kent. How you doing, man? What's up? Oh, geez, Mr. Man. fucking it's professional. Night, it's time for Ritual Misery. There's nowhere I would rather be except maybe in bed because I'm super tired and kind of feeling like yeah, you're, uh, you're, how are you, <laughs> dude? I tell you what, man. So I'm gonna recap my week very, very quickly. You ready for this? I put my big boy pants on and I fucking bought a house. Like we signed for it today. It's ours. We own it. It's this is our house. We like, I'm home. This is my place, dude. This is my joint. That is awesome. Congratulations. Like, I know it's, it sounds so fucking weird. I'm almost 40 years old and finally, you know. <laughs> I finally did an adult thing for once. So. Right. <laughs> Adulting is hard. It, it really is, and uh, I, I promise uh, not to make a not to make a habit of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> holy crap! Yeah, holy shit. So, um, how you been, dude? Uh, you know, I'm busy like usual. But you know, I have to say that hearing you say Beta 88 just really made me grin. Like, I want to hear you say it like three times in a row. Beta 88, beta 88, beta 88. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> no, can you believe it, man? It's been two years since we've been doing this show. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we are on the 88th episode. That is sick. That's uh it's pretty pretty fucking amazing. I I, I dig it. That's uh yeah. that's damn near awesome. That's... Not quite awesome. Damn near awesome. Like what hundred episodes is gonna be awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to plan something pretty big. And it, and just so you just just for you two listeners out there or watchers, and you're like, they say it's beta 88, but if you look on the website, it doesn't start until beta 3. That's because you're not a patron. Exactly. You need to go to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Give us a penny per episode, and it'll unlock the first two beta episodes for you, including, I think, even the alpha, which is like three hours long. And totally not worth listening to, but it's there for you as well. So but if you uh, are a completionist, <laughs> it's there. <laughs> of course, at 88 episodes in, if you're a completionist, you probably already turned this off and said, fuck it, I can't find the first couple. I'm done. It's How like, the you're, fuck are they still in beta? Yeah, yeah you're, <laughs> you're fucked up like my spawn collection. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's what I get God. for starting with episode nine. And then uh, letting, it, <laughs> letting it disappear over the over the ages. Speaking of which, I still have several of my Spawn uh, uh, comics. Yeah, not yeah, a lot. Yeah. I've got like I got like eight of them or something like that. I think. So. Yeah, that, that's cool. Yeah, it's whatever. Um, yeah, I've got boxes full of comics still from high school days. Yeah. 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 <laughs> my wife was so, asking me earlier this week about uh, about not being a comic book nerd. And I was like, I didn't have the money for the comic books. Like, the only way to do that was to steal them. And I was too busy stealing cigarettes to worry about stealing comic books. Like, <laughs> let's get our priorities straight here. Oh, man. Yeah, so, if you got to gotta choose to steal, steal the worst of the things that you can steal. Right, exactly, exactly. Hey, man, um, so you spent some time in Albuquerque this last weekend. Yeah, dude. Like we and, skipped a show, so you could you could go to Albuquerque, and I could try to unpack my house, which is still not done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Last weekend was a super good time, but it didn't didn't start out all that great. It was actually kind of like one disaster after another. Yeah. So after work on Friday, I came home, got something to eat, and then we pretty much got on the road, drove up to Albuquerque, and it's about it's about a three hour drive. Okay. Well, it's supposed to be a three hour drive. All right. Uh, so I'll get to that in a second. Uh, the, the whole reason that we went, Isaac had guest passes to an amusement park up there. Okay. It was, it was kind of a buy one, get one thing, like f for each adult pass that you buy for like, tw it's like 26 bucks or something like that. 
you get a free, like another free pass or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. So it was basically, we were taking four people, we were going to pay for two tickets and be good. So we're like, you know, hey, cool, this is a good excuse to go up to Albuquerque, spend, spend the whole weekend, just kind of make a little, like a mini vacation of just it. Check it off the list. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so we get about an hour into the trip, and then we're like, ah, damn it, left the tickets at home. It's like, God damn, I'll screw it. We're, it, we're too far. We're not going to turn back. If we turn back now, I'm going to be doing Ritual Misery tonight, and uh, um, we're not coming back. <laughs> so I was like, screw it. Let's just keep going. It's, okay. you know, whatever. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Talking about loss. We'll, we'll. So anyway, so we get to the freeway on ramp. And there's a north ramp and a south ramp, but it's in this clover pattern thing that has this weird, confusing lane thing. And uh, we ended up going south instead of north. Okay, well, all right, fine, we'll take the next exit. The next exit is 14 miles away. So that's 28 miles round trip you just blew. That's like, yep. it's like two Added gallons a of gas. Hour. Yeah, it's, it, oh my God. <laughs> Son of a, okay, ah, oh, shit. All right, all right. This is the last thing that's going to go wrong. Uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> so so our, our intention was to stay at this hotel that had a water park in it. Okay. Like so a, a Great Wolf Lodge whole, or whatever? Yeah. So yeah. we were going to spend basically one full day just doing water park stuff at the hotel. Okay. And it was, you know, super nice hotel and everything. I was like, yeah, cool. This is awesome. We pull into the parking lot, the dark parking lot of this hotel that I have reservations for. And what the hell? So I we park and I walk. So this up. this just became like Scooby Doo's Magical Mystery Tour at this point. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I walk in and the there's a lady at the at the reception counter and she's got a flashlight looking at at her <laughs> paperwork and stuff. I was like, um, <laughs> that's not promising. Yeah, I was like, um, I have a reservation, and she's like, uh, yeah, our generator blew and it's not gonna be fixed for a while, so all reservations are canceled. It's like, oh, you got to be kidding me That's right now. Quality. All right, cool. Yeah, good. All right, yeah. Uh, uh, but she was like, well, you know, the the motel next door, I know for sure they have vacancies. Uh, so if you stay the night there, maybe we can honor your your um, reservation for tomorrow. Okay, all right. Let's yeah, that's fine. Let's do that. So I went next door. Are, are, wait, wait, wait. Are you sure? Lodge. Are you sure this is not just like a Great Wolf Lodge, uh, a, a facade, and <laughs> and their whole gimmick is just to kick it over to this little you know Econo Lodge motel thing right next door? Okay. Well, that would be a very expensive operation because this was a huge building. It was like probably but, twenty times the size of the Econo Lodge. But just and the it, outside of it, though, you know. But it had a beautiful <laughs> lobby. I mean, they they went they went the extra mile here for this for this fake out. Like, that's like holy crap, man! It All must right. take them years to get get their money's worth out of that con. Uh, so anyway, so we go to the next door to the the Econo Lodge, and it's you, it's exactly what you think it is. It's this Roach Motel. Just it's a, pretty- it's it's an Econo Lodge. Yeah, it's it's not a uh, it's not a bougie lodge. Yeah. So you know, okay, whatever, no big deal. It's a it's a Clean, dry place to well, clean uh, is a relative term, I guess. But <laughs> it was a, a fairly safe place for us to lay our heads until tomorrow, so that we can go do our things. Um, yeah, so we're bringing our bags, and you know, we were on the second floor, so we we're bringing our bags up the steps and everything. And I see this this lady in the parking lot, like kind of on the edge of the parking lot, next to the the Econo Lodge sign, and she looked like she was upset, and she was. She was on her phone. She was looked like she was crying and stuff. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's kind of... So the scam continues is what you're telling me. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Uh, so anyway, so we, we bring our bags in, and then I look out the window, and this lady is now sitting on the, the ground next to the sign. She's leaning on the... There's like a like a barrier wall, because mm-hmm. on the side of there's a there's a road. And it's like, huh, okay, that's that's kind of odd. What's going on there? Well, I left it alone for a little while. Probably 10 or 15 minutes later, I looked outside again, and now she's laying on the ground. I was like, oh, jeez. So this she's, isn't- she's committed to the con, is what you're telling me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, so, she was super committed. <laughs> so, uh, Or needed to be. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, so I was like, all right. 
hey Steph, I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the um, the desk clerk and let her know what's going on out there. So I go down there and I talk to her and she's like, uh, okay, I guess I'll go check on her. <laughs> well, I told, well, by this time Steph Steph had come downstairs too. So the three of us went over and check on this lady and she's like passed out. So we, well, the the ladies anyway nudged her awake. And said, hey, you know, hey, uh, you okay? Like, you can't be, you can't just be laying out here in the street, basically. And she was out of her mind. She was like drunk as shit, uh, d- b- you know, barely making any sense. We finally got out of her that she was staying at a at a hotel that was like a block away. <laughs> was she staying at the Great Wolf Lodge? <laughs> yeah, pro- yeah, probably. <laughs> so I was like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna order you a taxi, and then you'll get in the taxi and go to your hotel, right? And she's like, okay, fine. It's like cool. So I call I call a cab. The cab arrives and he he kind of shows up on the other side of the parking lot. And I go over there. I'm like, hey, um, there's this lady over here that um, she's had a little bit too much to drink. It, are are you okay with taking her to her hotel? Um, I'll go ahead and pay. I'll pay you cash right now. You know, so that you don't get stiffed or whatever. He's like, yeah. he's like, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I was like, all right, drive, you know, drive around to the other side of the parking lot. By the time we get over to that side of the parking lot, she is like passed out face down the cab driver looks at her and he goes nope (laughs) 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 he's he's probably thinking this bitch is dead like she's not passed out they're they're trying to get me to drive a body across town (laughs) 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 keep keep her 20 bucks kid i'm not going to jail for your ass Add a couple zeros if you want me to be an accomplice to a crime. Oh a shit, bitch. that's awesome! Oh man, so we we ended up calling the cops because there was no way we're just gonna leave this lady laying there and the, basically in the street. And cop came. He was like, "God damn it!" He was all pissed off. I was like, "Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait!" Was was the cop white? Yeah. Was the lady black? No. Ah, see, missed opportunity for ultimate drama right there, man. <laughs> No, but I, you know, I kind of was like, how was, great would that video have been, huh? <laughs> Cop Capon couples up, ladies literally passed out in the middle of the damn street. He just walks up and starts kicking her, you know. And you're <laughs> you're, you're there on your phone, not helping the lady out, just watching. Ah, yes. oh, this is gonna be viral. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. <laughs> oh wait, shouldn't I be helping her? Well, whatever, you know. Hey, it's it, it's your story, bro. <laughs> but no, he he said that. The, the reason he was so agitated, he, he said this was the 10th or 11th incident just like this tonight. He's like, every Friday and Saturday night in this damn town. Like, damn. That's so that's awesome. what the Albuquerque Police Department does every Friday and Saturday night. They go pick up drunk people from the middle of the street. Hell yeah. Uh, but, but he was like, you know what? I'm, I'm not dealing with this. He called, he called an ambulance to come get her. <laughs> and he pieced the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so that was day one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right. You got, you, you got my attention. All right, let's see what, what you got. No, th- th- we got all of the disasters out of the way on day one. Days two and three were actually a lot of fun. Uh, so day two, Saturday, we went to the amusement park. And we spent half the day there riding all the rides. Uh, super fun. A mm-hmm. little too hot, perhaps, uh, but... You know, whatever we got over that. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, then we went. Uh, ah, where did we go? Oh, th- that's when we went on our our Breaking Bad tour. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Or- not, it wasn't an organized tour or anything. We just looked up some of the locations uh, <laughs> of um, you know for filming. First you're, place we went. You're on the Breaking Bad Reddit, just hoping to find shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we went past Walt's house, and uh, we were gonna stop and like stand across the street or whatever and get our pictures taken with it in the background. But the old people that live there were sitting outside on the lawn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, mm, yeah, that's, that's kind of awkward. Let's just go. I would have loved so, it. I would have loved it. Yeah. We, we didn't get a picture of, of Walt's house, but then the next place we went, which is only a couple of blocks away was Saul Goodman's office. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, I put that one out there on Twitter. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that was, uh, that was pretty cool. The actual location is a bar, 
but the the Saul the Saul Goodman uh uh street uh a door sign yeah 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 attorney at law whatever mm-hmm. um it's you know it's there it's part of the building and it's super cool uh so then anyway so then after that we went back to the hotel or motel and checked on our hotel the power was back on but their water was out <laughs> we were going there for the water park <laughs> So it was like, damn it. Wow. <sighs> so we ended up staying both nights at the Econo Lodge. Um, but yeah, so one of the one of the so, things we so did the next day you was do, we had you do lunch realize that at, a, a Great Wolf Lodge with no water is just basically a bunch of fucking rug burn on your back, right? That's <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, basically. <laughs> hey, throw a cup of water down the slide, I'm going to jump. <laughs> Hey, y'all, watch this. <laughs> yeah, he gets down there, smacks in the concrete in the bottom of the pool, and be like, next time we got to use two cups. <laughs> Wasn't quite enough. Need, need a little more water next time. Uh, need a you did get that on video, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's amazing. Mimi forgot to put the cassette uh, in. <laughs> uh, okay, so so day three. Yeah, so day three was a little more um, low key, I think, because uh, we were leaving that day, so we wanted to just kind of do some uh, more quiet things, I guess. Uh, we went out to eat to this restaurant called Twisters, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is a filming location for Los Pollos Hermanos from Breaking Bad, gotcha. the chicken place that was owned uh-huh, by Gus. Uh-huh. Yep. And uh, yeah, so it was really cool. The inside is kind of decked out like Los Pollos Hermanos. They even have Walt's table, like labeled. Of course, that's where we sat. Went up and ordered food. It's it's basically a burger. So so luckily you're the only person in all of Albuquerque that was there on the uh the Walt uh tour that day. No, oh no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'll get into that in a second. (laughs) But first let me let me describe some of my jackassery. We Oh yes we were ordering our it's a it's a burger slash Mexican joint, but they did have chicken sandwiches. So I I ordered a chicken sandwich because you can't go to Los Pollos Hermanos and not have chicken, right? Right, right. So anyway, so I ordered chicken, and then I asked the lady, said, uh, "Excuse me, is is Gus Fring working today?" <laughs> and she's like, "No, he's got the day off." <laughs> <Just nonchalant. laughs> that works. And I was, damn it, I was like. Uh, it's like you probably hear, you probably get asked that a lot, don't you? She's like, every day, all, all day. day long. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can, you, can oh. you imagine? Can you imagine that that guy that goes there like for lunch every day, and he asks the question every single day? Like he just walks in there, <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, can I get the, uh, can I get the the herbal chicken sandwich?" And uh, <laughs> uh, is Gus in today? I'm trying to. I'm try, I've been trying to. Been trying to get get a hold of Gus. No, no Gus. Oh. Okay. I can't, can't cancel that sandwich. Cancel that sandwich. I'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> yep. I, I would not be surprised by that at all. So the whole time we were eating, people kept coming in and taking pictures. And and people were, you know, of course, we, we had a window seat because we were at Walt's table. People kept pulling into the parking lot, getting out, taking pictures and leaving. And um, there was actually one one group of dudes there's like three or four dudes in this group that came into the restaurant looked around for a second and then they went back outside and i just assumed that they had left but as we were leaving they came back into the restaurant they had been sitting in their car waiting for us to get up because they wanted to sit at walt's table (laughs) no shit uh that's me and you as long as i wasn't hungry and (laughs) you weren't bored (laughs) yeah uh, but anyway, so all that was super fun. But the, the coolest thing that we did, one of the, the most fun, interesting things that I've ever done ever in my life. Have you ever heard of an escape room? An escape room? Yes. Like a, a safe room? No, not a safe room. An escape room. No. I think Brian and Bonnie did one of these a couple of months ago i i feel like maybe they talked about it on a night attack or maybe it was just a twitter thing or something okay but so basically what it is you go to this place and you you 
basically it, you choose your adventure. They have like different storylines that you can choose from. Okay. And you go into this room and you and your team, your friends, your family, whoever you go with, you have to solve basically solve a mystery. And you're in this room that's just decked out like a like an office or what have you mm -hmm. and there's hidden clues and you have to solve puzzles to like find combinations for locks to get the locks to open um, solve puzzles and you know figure out that you have to like you know remove this painting from the wall to get more clues so that you can eventually solve the mystery right right okay but you have 60 minute you have a 60 minute time limit the the storyline that we got was called unpublished and the premise was that your investigative reporters and your partner, oh, by the way, this is like 1974, I think. And you and your, your partner were investigating the Watergate scandal. And your partner found a link between the JFK assassination and Watergate. Okay. And he was about to publish this article, but he goes missing. Gotcha. So the whole idea is that you have to find, find the information that he found and publish it before the time runs out. Okay. So I, I guess somebody is coming to, they're going to come get you too if you don't do it in time. Because hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, well, so anyway, we, we ended up losing. Yeah? How close were you? He said we were about three clues away from finishing. Oh. And, so, how, and how much did this cost you? Uh, I think it was 25 bucks a person. So 100 bucks for the four, four of you. Yeah. 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 But and, oh my and, and god! Was it one of those situations where you each were bringing something to the table, and then there's like one of you was just completely derelict and shitty? Like, <laughs> no, like, no. Like we were all like we, we basically were taking turns solving puzzles. Yeah. Um, the the neat thing about this room was that initially we were split up, two of us in in two different rooms. Ah. And there was a door between our rooms, and the first thing that we had to do really was like find a way to communicate with the people in the other room. Because there were clues that we would find that we couldn't use. It was the people in the other room had to use and vice versa. Gotcha. So I had to, I'm not going to spoil anything because these are, yeah, I'm just, I'm not going to spoil the, the, how it worked. But um, eventually, well, pretty quickly, we figured out how to communicate with the other room. And eventually, through this elaborate string of clues, we were able to get the door open. And then that's when, like, we really, really got on a roll. It was like, holy shit, because we had this stack of shit that we didn't know what to do with. Isaac and I were, were partners, and then uh, Lucas and Stephanie were partners. And then they had a stack of shit that they didn't know what to do with. And we basically just ran into each other's rooms and just started searching around and like, oh, this, oh, this is going to be used on this. And then and it was like, just solve, 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 solve. And then we kind of hit didn't, a, didn't solve. a roadblock, and then the timer ran out. <laughs> so it's like, shit. <laughs> so, uh, strength but in chat. Strength in the chat room wants to know if you saw any anybody any filming of uh, Better Call Saul while you were there. No, un unfortunately, no. Um, no. I didn't see Bob Odenkirk. That would have been super awesome. Can you imagine going there to stand in front of the door to get your picture taken, and then Bob Odenkirk walk walks oh, out? I wonder if they use Saul the same himself. sets. Uh, I, I haven't watched Better Call Saul, so I don't know where the story is versus uh, Breaking Bad and and how they relate if they're use if they're even at the point. In Better Call Saul, where it's matched up to, you know, like a, a, the timeline would be similar enough, like in, in that timeline or in that, that time frame, where he would have that particular office, or if he's still somewhere else, or whatever, you know. So yeah, that's that's actually a good question because I haven't I haven't watched it either. Damn um, it, where's Jackie when we need her? Right, exactly. Or Lucas even. Lucas yeah. watched. Well, um, Lucas is up to season one. So, uh, so Strengths is also asking if you found a bunny hole somewhere in town that uh, <laughs> had, had a lot of steps uh, going the wrong way. Um, yeah, um, I should have made it. Well, that's what happened on the freeway. I should have made a left turn at Albuquerque. Yeah, and screwed that all up. You end up in Fresno, Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, but right, yeah. man. So, so we, yeah, we were making those jokes. So, so you had a uh, so you had a, a a good time in uh in Albuquerque overall. It was it was it was a blast. E even the even the the shitty Friday night that gave me a great story to tell here. So yeah, yeah it was super awesome. <laughs> 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 what did have you done anything uh lately that's that's pretty cool? Like what what did you do last weekend? Um I tell you what man, 
so we we have a if a friend of the show, Richard Gunther. He's been on the show a few times. And uh that was uh that was completely uncalled for. And <laughs> Yeah, what was that? Was your your computer so, so, farting or something? Yeah, this is a uh, we we have a reminder set up that uh, each night because it's still light outside, like it's still early evening light outside. Um, to close the curtains at nine o'clock and to uh, to turn all the electronics off at ten, and then bedtimes at eleven because it's summer. So that was the alert to close all the curtains so you can try to fake yourself into be- thinking it's, it's dark right. outside. Right? Because yeah, because in Alaska you don't have the the um the time cues of or the light cues i guess of right. the sun to tell you what time it is right so my camera's even uh jerking me around right now man it's been it's just been a night this is awesome um <laughs> so uh so last week yeah richard gunther and i got together and did a podcast for him for his podcast called home on it's a show about home automation and uh, the smart home that kind of thing and we talked about me moving into this house and wanting to uh, you know, convert it to a smart house to to get some some fancy stuff going, some home automation, and uh, be able to control things with with my phone and all that kind of things. And it, awesome. uh, it, we we sat and we talked for like two hours, and you would not know it according to how it went. So um, he did a great job editing it and producing it, and I'd re- really recommend that. I believe it's episode seventy four of Home On. Uh, it's called the. Uh, the new house or something. I, I should really know these things. I should have really have these in the show notes. I've actually, I've, I've got it in my podcatcher. It is indeed episode 74. It's called the first house, the first house. So there yep. you go. Yeah. Um, um, th- yeah, that's, that's perfect because you wanted advice for, uh, how to automate your house, basically make it a smart home. Yep. And y- there is not a better person that I've ever met or even heard of that could help you with this Richard is so good at this he pretty much knows about every product out there available what works what doesn't work uh, what works better than the next thing Um, yeah yeah, like I I highly recommend that to anybody that's even slightly interested in home automation home on is the name of the show yeah and uh, again we had a good time and I don't know if he I don't know if he actually like keeps the full show uh, maybe maybe stash away somewhere, but it, we might uh, we might try to see if I can ca- get get some of that from him because we had a few uh, tangential uh, conversations that were right up the alley of this show here. And of course, you know him having been on the show more than once, um, yeah. it shouldn't surprise anybody. So it was, it was a good times. Really really enjoyed it. Awesome. And that did release yesterday morning. So that's uh, that should be in your podcasters now if you wanted to look it up. But that yeah, was awesome. Yeah. That was a good time. And. So- as a result of that, uh, as a direct result of that show, um, I installed an Ecobee in the house mm. uh, earlier this week, and it's working pretty good. And then uh, my wife got got up this morning, and the basement was scalding hot because it was pretty chilly last night. And of course, we only have one zone, one one heating zone in our house. So if the if the Ecobee recognizes that the upstairs is cold. It's just going to turn the heat on because that's where everybody's at. You know, it can tell you, it can sense where you're at according to the sensors and things like that. And it, wherever you are, that's what it wants to bring up the, to the temperature. And our heater is in the in the basement, and we have heater vents in the basement. So where did all the heat go? Right into the basement. And of course, they had the door closed coming out of the basement, which is our living room and where my studio is. And they had the door closed going into the kitchen, so the heat didn't have anywhere to go, so it couldn't filter up into the rest of the house. So they went to come downstairs this morning, and it was just sweltering hot. So what did my wife say? Oh, you mean you can fix that with closing some vents and getting a couple more, another pack of sensors for the Ecobee? Go do that. So today, on, after I got home, I installed two more sensors in the Ecobee. So now we have one in our bedroom, one in the living room in the basement, and one in the computer room, which should be the living room on the middle floor. Nice. You're like a kid in a candy store with with this thing. Oh my god! So imagine this, man. You know how I am when I get a car and I want I want to tinker with it and make it all personalized and everything else and just get it going. I got a whole house. Like, <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, I I rerouted. Uh, I, I converted some uh, some RJ45 to Cat5. Um, I, th- I think that's how it works out. The telephone to Cat5 because it was already ran with Cat5. It was just it was the lines were cut, so I just trimmed them off. 
put some oh. uh, some some connectors on there, some Molex connectors or whatever. And man, I went to town. So now I've got my my um, time capsule in the garage, where, right next to my cable modem. I've got my Airport Extreme on the opposite side of the house, running to the the uh, the, the time capsule by uh, Cat Five. This house is lit up from Wi-Fi from from every direction, man. Like you can. I can be like a quarter mile away from the house and still catch Wi-Fi from my house. It's it's amazing. Um, and then next up, I'm going to be getting a uh, a Mocha connector, uh, two Mocha adapters to run the the studio that I have does not have Cat Five or telephone or anything else ran to it. So and I'd have to run you know Cat Five like all the way through the basement and everything else, and it'd be just ugly as sin and putting holes in the walls and shit like that, or go outside and put more holes in the walls or whatever. Um, right. But the room is routed for cable. When they finished the basement, they did route this room for cable, for television cable. Well, I don't have cable. We don't have cable at all. So the only cable coming into the house is just for the internet, and then all the cables to the room aren't being used at all. So what I'm going to do is use a Mocha connector, or, yeah, Mocha, and uh, go directly from the router through the cable line into this room, and I'll have a direct stream, you know, basically Ethernet connectivity, straight to my yeah. router upstairs specifically so I can podcast. Yeah. So no, <laughs> no Wi-Fi glitches. It'll be straight, straight uh, gigabit per second throughput. That's, that's amazing. That's yes. sick, isn't it? That's so good. <clears throat> so that's, that's my next project and I'll probably be ordering that uh, the next couple of days. And we have our patrons to thank for funding that particular project. Yep. Awesome. Yes. Thank you patrons. So it's uh, taken a while to build, build, to build up the cash, but, uh, those of you spitting in a few dollars here and there, man, we really appreciate it. And it's going to, it's going to cure my Wi-Fi woes as far as streaming the show. Yep. Yep. So. Um, yeah. And if you want to help us with that, it's patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah, we, we appreciate any, any number of pennies that you can spare. Uh, so. Hey dude, have you, have you watched the Netflix series stranger things? I have not. Oh my God, I, son. I, I, I just haven't had time yet. Like it's, it's probably, I did watch some of that CNN 60s thing, the television oh, episode yeah. and um, the JFK, and I think there's one in between. Um, but I watched those three, and holy shit, how well can you do a fucking documentary? Oh, absolutely. Like, it is the whole insane. series is like that, as, and the 70s is made exactly the same way. And, and I'm not, and they're doing the 80s. I saw, I saw one of the episodes of the 80s when we were at a Chinese restaurant here um, about a month ago. Eight. I cannot wait for that to be on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just gotta say, man, I'm I'm not a big fan of CNN in general because I I think their 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 political skewing is a little more, uh, it's 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 more politically skewed than I would prefer a major outlet to be. Same reason I don't watch Fox News, and for the exact opposite reason. Well, mm -hmm. for the same reason, just the the opposite direction. Opposite direction, right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, uh, so I don't watch CNN very much at all, but I respect him as a news organization to be able to find information and gather it. And I got to tell you, man, those those documentaries are top notch. Holy shit, really good, really good. Absolutely, and they're yeah. not they're not constrained to a specific amount of time either. Um, they vary in length. Like the TV one was like an hour and fifteen minutes, and then the JFK one was like just shy of two hours. You know, yeah. so they, they, it's not like they're they're trying to slam it into one specific time frame. It's man, it's really good. Yeah, really they good. give it the amount of time that they need to to tell, like to give you all the things. Yeah, it yeah. takes exactly that amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so so back to Stranger Things, man. Strengths is saying he's watched it. He even watched it on a four four to three ratio CRT TV, uh, <laughs> just to get the full uh, '90s effect going on. Holy crap, man! That is that is awesome. <laughs> so yeah, dude. So Strink says that it was a nostalgia trip for him, and it very, very much is a nostalgia trip for me, and I know it will be for you too, Amos. The, the, the story takes place in 1983, and it's like some of the main characters are 12-year-olds. I would say the, the main characters are 12-year-olds, and it starts out with them playing Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah. And, it's like E.T. Uh, <laughs> yes. The, oh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. This show is reference after reference after reference after reference to uh, Stephen King novels, to uh, um, uh, Steven Spielberg movies, the um, '80s in general. All kinds of like sci-fi horror type stuff. Like there's references to aliens. Um, 
the Evil Dead. Like, there's so much in there. Um, Stand by Me. Nice. So much. So much. I, I even saw that uh, that Will Wheaton had compared it to is like the 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 new version of Stand by Me. Um, to a point, not storyline wise, but in the the way that the kids talk and interact with each other. Yeah. It's very much got that stand by me feel. So so Strengths just said all I need to know about the show. In the chat room he said uh combination of the Goonies and Stand By Me slash E T. Like how up oh, that's fuck yep. it. I'm in. I'm in. I'm watching it tonight. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Done. That's that's pretty much that's pretty much accurate. Add a, a little bit of horror in there and that's a little, 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 little bit of pet cemetery yeah there yeah <laughs> or it it is probably Ooh. fire starter add it or fire starter yeah or maybe a bit of both in there now did you ever read it no <sighs> did you you watch the movie at least right yeah 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 you, you have to read it yeah event, I, dude I, it's it's on my list it's probably like number 916 on my it's, it's gotta list be like books top 10 man just out of the concept not even not i know you're not like a stephen king like a huge stephen king fan um i only have you ever even read a stephen king novel i have not oh uh, make it the first one okay yeah make it the first one it's 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 an amazing my first stephen king novel by the way was the stand complete uncut and unabridged that's that's insane. 1300 that's like fucking pages, pages man 1300 pages in small print in in that that the, you know you got the, you got the normal uh, trade not not even trade paperback like the the normal fucking newsstand paperback. Well, this yeah. is like the small one, extra extra like three lines on per page. You know, <laughs> yeah, it was it was that in thirteen hundred and eighty six pages or something like that. I don't know. Your old Spanish teacher has it, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even kidding. Uh, let her borrow it, and I just never got it back. Um, but yeah, that that was my first one, and I would say that it would would be a way better read. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you that, that's got to be at least top ten, dude. Top ten in your list. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, um, one one additional thing that I got out of this that that um, I'm I know for sure that strengths did not get out of it is that we did a project. You, me, and our friend Patrick did kind of a, a creative project together where we were writing a story together, uh, very similar to what George R. R. Martin has done with wild cards, if anyone is is familiar with that. Uh, but we did it way before we ever even heard of George R. R. Martin, uh, where one of us would write a chapter and then pass it on to the next person. And this is this was we started this before any of us were on the internet. Uh, so one of us would start a chapter or write a chapter and then pass it to the next person and then they would write a chapter pass it to the next person they would write a chapter so on and so forth and it was it was super fun to do because we yeah there we go for those of you watching the video amos has the the sole surviving copy yes <laughs> yes of the first six I, chapters i thought i had a copy and i looked for it but i could not i could not find it anywhere um, but it was really cool because each of us kind of made our own main characters up and the eventual, the idea was that the, the characters would eventually meet up and interact. And I don't remember, did we, did we get to a point where they were starting to meet each other? Uh, yes. It, well, we, we were, uh, um, some of the characters were observing others from afar Ah uh, yes, and there yes. had been there had been one character that had interacted, um, but yeah, they 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 were there. It was a lot closer uh, to them all meeting and being uh, and, and it being introduced to each other than it should have been that early in the novel. True, true, yeah. Uh, but we was, I, I can see that after project. after rereading it twenty years later. <laughs> yeah. It's an unfinished project. Maybe maybe we we'll, we will revisit that. I would I would actually. Kind of oh, we, we got to find out if Pat's got a uh, got regular internet access. Like how I don't know I don't know what his station in life is right now. Unfortunately, right? Yeah, um, Pat, sadly, if you're listening so. to this, reach out to us and let us know. Yeah, uh, if you know where your thoughts are with a story, and if you're interested in, in this is that. definitely something I would be interested in, uh, in in recouping on. But back to uh, back to Stranger Things, man. Yeah, 
the you know, while I was watching Stranger Things, because the, the show is kind of a mystery, like you can't quite figure out what's you know what's happening and and uh, where the story is going to go. Uh, but some of the elements that were in it, like certain people having powers, uh, there was this dark force uh, exerting itself on the innocent people or whatever. Um, some of these themes were were things that that we did in Ace Story. That, I mean, this this show could exist in the same universe that we created for Ace Story. Yeah, which I think probably isn't all that coincidental because a lot of our influences were the same things, things that, that you just listed as influencing this mo- this TV show. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I didn't think about that until just tonight when I was thinking about what you know why you know it's so cool. It's this weird coincidence that they're the same. That I. Yeah, it's because they were both probably influenced by the same thing. What what, uh, what got me is, especially rereading this, I realized how similar our story was to um, to uh, heroes, in in that people are are suddenly coming out with with these powers that they don't understand how they got them. They they're not sure how to control them. They don't know what different difference differentiates them from the regular populace, or if the rest of the populace has these and they're just not aware of it. Like yeah. that yeah. whole like feeling of it was kind of similar, although ours took a very direct dark turn straight <laughs> out the gate. So, <laughs> right. you know, like hey, here's this cool shit. Oh yeah, by the way, smack the peepee. Um, <laughs> you know, it was uh, <laughs> much much darker, much quicker. Um, yeah. You know, it, it might be interesting to give away like um, maybe chapters to patrons. Uh, well, you, you know, I think I think that that might be something we just do with uh, with uh, with Diamond Club in general. Actually, I don't know that because uh, uh, I've reread it. Uh, it's probably not 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 uh, not something we just want to kick out there and, and say it's some exclusive thing. Because oh yeah, because it, it's not. It was written by eighteen year olds uh, separated for the first time uh, and and written by male. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, by, by yeah, postage other, mail. We were actually writing this down with pen and paper, and then every and time I would get it, I would put it together in a digital file and update the digital file, and have to go back and redo the corrections. And I still have the three, uh, three and a quarter inch floppy or three and a half inch floppy or whatever. What what the hell size is this? It's a uh, three and, yeah, and a half, three and half, right? Three and a half inch floppy. I still have that shit right here in my hand uh, with the story on it, probably written in a doc file, like. Not a Microsoft doc file, like a, 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 was it RXT rich text file? Or R- yeah, or some, uh, uh, hopefully it's not a work file, like a works file. <laughs> it might be, dude. It, it might. If you can find a floppy drive, you need to. Oh, you I have one in there. Oh yeah, I have one. Um, in fact, oh shit, like I had all this stuff like ready to go, like. <laughs> It was. It was just. I don't know where it went, dude. It was just right here. Like it, it. It like grew legs and walked away or something. So you're the opposite of Tom Merritt. Because yeah, 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 Whatever is being talked about, he's like, oh, like this right here. And he just <laughs> pulls it out of nowhere. You're I, like, oh, this thing I have right. Oh shit, where's? Oh, I can't find it. <laughs> see, here's the thing. Here, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, a little Diamond Club secret. You ready for this? this? Is a Diamond Club exclusive secret right here. This is this is all new shit, man. This is all this is something that's gonna. It, ain't no one else got the skinny on this like I do. You ready for this? This is how this is gonna work. All right. This this is what's up. Now now when you're doing a Diamond Club show, now you got gremlins behind your screen. Behind the camera. That's why the camera is always in focus. It's always on there because the little gremlins holding that shit, making that shit happen. But let me tell you something about the little gremlins. Tom Merritt, he got the good gremlins. He got that big money gremlins. He got the gremlins that that actually reach out and find shit that's being talked about and bring it to him. And he just grabs it and shows it. And everybody thinks he's all special. Like he, like he knows what's going on and shit. Like he, like he, he preempts the conversations with, with knowledge, and 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 he can just wah, 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 and telepathically know what's going on. No, it's the grill of gremlins. Gremlins grabbing his shit. They grabbing his shit and bringing it to him. My gremlins, my gremlins hiding shit. They hiding shit all over the place. Like I had it right here. That motherfucker picked it up and walked right over. He, it's it's over there now. It's over there. I can see it. It's right there. 
I didn't put it there. Did you put it there? No, you didn't put it there. You know I can my gremlin throw it there. Damn gremlins. I need some new gremlins. <laughs> you need to pay your gremlins more. <laughs> Tom's gremlins have that patron money. <laughs> they got that Patreon money. I ain't got no Patreon money. I, I got I got little Patreon's money. I got a little bit of I, I I ain't got no bit no good gremlin money. I got I got I barely got bad gremlin money. They here on <laughs> scholarships and shit. That these gremlins here on scholarships. <laughs> oh man, that was fantastic. <laughs> oh, oh man, uh, hey uh, so so where were we? What what, what was going on? What's uh uh yeah, I think we were just wrapping things up. Actually, <laughs> we were just finished up talking about Ace story. And um, I don't know. Hey man, uh, I got I got one more thing for you. We've been doing a lot of, a lot of hey uh, you know, um, th- there's this going on, there's this going on. You can take part in this, you can take part in that. I found something. My my wife found something this week that just blew me away. Did you did you follow this link? I did. Oh actually, my god. Yes. Oh my god. Okay, so I uh, uh, <sighs> how would you explain this? This is a cardboard city. And how would you explain this to the, someone who has never heard of it before? Okay, it's a. It, okay, Cardboard City is actually part of a larger project. Uh, it's a community outreach sort of thing that helps homeless people. Uh, it's a. It's mainly a, a series of churches. I think there's like fourteen of them or something like that in this program, and they offer to house families like parents and children that are homeless uh, but it's a temporary thing and it the program has requirements like you have to uh, work towards self-sufficiency uh, which I think is brilliant they help you get on your feet help you find a job um, you know help you know basically help you get back on your feet and it's a super great program and one of the things that they do to raise money and awareness for that matter is they have this event that's called Cardboard City, or it's actually, I don't know if it's an event or if it's a. Does it go like uh, all summer long? No, no, no. It's it's a it's a one night per summer thing. Oh, is it only one night? It's okay. only one night. So the the way it works is you pay. I think it's fifty dollars. Fifty dollars per spot. Right to to. It's just like going camping, uh, but instead of pitching a tent, you bring a cardboard box. Um, you know, you decorate it yourself. They have contests for like who who's is uh, the coolest decorations and all that that kind of stuff. Uh, but the whole idea is to experience what it's like to sleep outside, like truly outside. Okay, you've got a cardboard box. Um, they'll feed you one meal, like a, a very simple meal. You can't bring food with you. If you bring food with you, they consider that a donation to the food bank. Right. Um, it's it's super neat. Raises awareness. Um, apparently, it's a it's a pretty good time because they have people there uh, playing guitars and things like that, try to you know entertain people and whatnot. Uh, but it sounds like it's a really good time and it's a super cool thing for raising awareness and helping people. Um, th- there's a lot of homeless, well, in every city. Um, that really all they need, most of them, all they need is just a, a, a pick me up, like help, like help me over this hump and then we'll be okay. And, uh, it, any program like that, that can, that can help people get back on their feet is, is absolutely wonderful. In my okay. Opinion. I'm going to take a slightly different approach. Okay. If you think for one minute that bringing a box to a park, sleeping in it for an evening, and having a meal at a soup kitchen after you've paid 50 bucks is anything like experiencing real homelessness, you are very sadly fucking mistaken. Oh, absolutely. But it's the the, it's the, 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 the concept the, kid, I, the concept of homelessness isn't sleeping in a cardboard box and eating in a soup kitchen it's not knowing when that next meal is going to come not knowing when you're going to get another shoe not knowing how your children are going to get to school 
and fed that day. If you want to actually experience, because they sell it, they sell it as you can experience homelessness for a night and build up a an understanding of what it's like. If you want an actual understanding of what it's like to be homeless, go give up everything that you own right now. Go out into the whatever city you have. Find a box. Don't buy one at your local box mart. Find a box. And then once you're out there and you've got the only clothes that you're going to have are the ones that you, ha- that you wear, the box that you may or may not have found is all that you can live in. Now go find a soup kitchen. Go find somewhere to eat. Oh, and by the way, it's not for a night. Why don't you go out there for six plus a random plus go go out there for two D six months and not know what the result is. And then you'll have some inkling of what it actually means to be homeless anywhere in the country. I, I just think I I understand that they want to help the homeless and they want to bring awareness of the situation. And maybe that's the case with some of the younger people. You know, maybe some kids will finally realize, oh, I can't bring electronics. Oh, this is hard. But don't sell it as understanding what homeless go through. I, see, I didn't take it that way at all. I didn't think... I, I completely is- did. One of the links on there was like, experience homelessness and understand more about the problem. You're not going to understand anything about it after sleeping in a box for one night. Knowing that at nine o'clock the next morning you get back in your fucking in your beamer and drive back to the house, right? But that's but that's not the point. If if you're there doing this, you're there because you want to help. And this is just kind of like in in that theme. Like nobody says, "Oh, you know what? I want to know what it's like to be homeless." And fuck it, I'm going to be homeless just so I can know. Nobody wants to be homeless. Right. You know, I, but, I, and I, I don't think that's the point. How much does this event cost to uh, cost to hold? I have no idea. How much of your $50 Probably. is actually going directly towards the cause and not paying for admin costs and advertising fees and all that other stuff? I imagine this is it's minimum cost because the one one would hope you know how much it, you know how much it costs by volunteers you know how much it costs to go down to the uh to the soup kitchen and actually serve some food yourself sit down with some of these uh some of these people that are that are desolate and and uh and don't have a home and and just have stories to tell and actually sit there and listen to the, to their story and understand their perspective and try to actually understand them and learn who they are you know how much that costs nothing just your time. your time. Well, right, but that this program also does that. They're all, the same exact website, one page over, is asking for volunteers to do all of these things. See, it it just it 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 just bothers me I, anytime that you, anytime there, there's a presumption that you're going to understand someone else's plight by spending a finite amount of time in their shoes. It <laughs> it drives me fucking batty. It drives me batty. I, but I again, I, was, I, think I saw you, things like this in the point. Uh, maybe I am. Maybe I am. Maybe this is just not aimed at me. You know, maybe I would rather just go down to the soup kitchen, spend a Saturday at the soup kitchen, preparing the meals, serving the meals, and cleaning up afterwards. Maybe that's more my thing, which it actually kind of is. Um, well, you go. That's how you contribute, right? But this just seemed completely complete. I, I I can't even think of the word. I'm pulling a U right now. Like the word is not coming to my vocabulary. It just seems so absurd and uh, presumptuous. It just it it didn't it didn't jive with me at all. However, all that being said, if this is something that interests you, I'm sure that, that Alaska is not the only place doing this. Because I know they had uh, they had things like this in Hawaii where people would have to go out with nothing but a sleeping bag and sleep on the beach for a night to understand what it's like to be homeless in Hawaii. I mean, this is not the first time I've seen something like this. If this is something that interests you, reach out and find it and uh, find something that's going on in your local churches or your local charities and contribute in some way. It, it, it's definitely a problem that needs to be brought up a lot more often, and that's actually the reason I wanted to bring it up on this show tonight. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm, I am all 
all for that program. I, th- I think it's I think it's fantastic. I, I don't I don't agree with the concept, but I love the uh, the general idea of going out and helping the community and helping those that are not yeah. in the same station you're in. Well, yeah. yeah the The actual program is called Family Promise something. I think it's three words like Family Promise something. Um, and it's the cardboard name. city thing is just one <laughs> like just one event that they that they do right. Uh, but it's yeah, they, like they they've got the right idea, I think. Um, so with the overall program pretty cool all right man um what else you got what else you got what, what else is going on what, what else is stewing in your nugget what else is uh cruising through your brain what else is uh you know um i can't think of any any other uh uh, uh ways of saying what the fuck's on your <laughs> on your mind <laughs> you know uh that's about all i've got because i'm like super tired and i need to get up tomorrow too so um I'll tell you what, if people want to know things that are going on with me, they can go to Twitter and find me at RM underscore Del Noche. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. What about... Uh, I don't know what kind of what, beer I've been drinking. Like, which like, like what about this I one? Have you actually had this one? I was drinking water tonight, so have, have, there won't be any entries on Rate Beer from me, but you can find me, username Del Noche, at Rate Beer. Have you had this one? Alaska oh, Amber? Can, or, Alaska Amber? Uh, I'm pretty sure I have, yeah. It's a... Uh, I actually had this at South by Southwest, mm. and I got to say it's it's pretty good. Yeah, it's you're good. you're a much bigger fan of the ambers than I am. Yeah, you're you're more the uh, the other end of the scale, the IPAs and the 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 bitter hoppy crappy beers. <laughs> so bitter, <laughs> wonderful, tasty, delicious beers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not so much, not so much. Um, so, where are you at, man? Uh, you can find me at, on Twitter at Ethan Kane, the E T H A N C A I N E. I don't know why I felt like spelling it, but fuck it, I just did. And uh, you can cruise on over to at Ritual Misery on the Twitter to find out what, what's going on with the show. Um, find out when we're going to recording next, and that is up to um, up to some debate right now as far as when we're going to move because Friday nights kind of doesn't work out for either one of us. Hasn't worked out for you for a while because it's like Friday night. Uh, but it's the only time we had available while I was in Korea. So we're looking at, at re-optimizing some of that and getting getting a better time slot and making ourselves a little bit more available for the live audience. Uh, so keep keep t- in touch on that on uh, on Twitter at Ritual Misery. You can know, you can cruise by our subreddit ritualmisery.reddit.com. Let give us your ideas and let us know what you think and uh, see if there's some things on there you just want to have said. And uh, we'll we'll get that in the show as well. And then, of course, if you want to give us some direct uh, direct feedback, you can email us at podcastritualmisery.com. Like and say, hey, Amos needs to get his fucking mouth working because that shit's not working tonight. Uh, you can cruise on over to podcastritualmisery.com. Then uh, let us know that information. And, of course, you can always call and leave us a voicemail at 567-698-7672. That's 567-69-TRMPC. And you can find all these links and more ways to support the show at RitualMisery.com. Don't forget that Patreon. We really appreciate those that are that are doing that for us. And thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for letting us use your music. Um, thank you, our listener, for listening. For me, for Kent, and for you, this is your Ritual Misery Podcast. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Say beta eighty eight one more time. Beta eighty eight. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I don't know why I like that so much. <laughs>